Video Lecture 4E, Bronson-Lowry Acid-Base Theory. In the previous lecture, we learned about Arrhenius Acid-Base Theory. This theory only accounts for a subset of acid-base reactions that you will encounter in your general chemistry studies. In 1923, Johannes Bronsted and T.M. Lowry independently came up with another theory that explains a wider variety of acid-base reactions. In Bronsted-Lowry theory, acids are considered to be proton donors. Bases are proton acceptors. Notice that when we discuss protons, that, that is synonymous with H plus ions. Therefore, most acid base reactions are considered proton transfer reactions, including the acid base neutralization reactions we encountered in the previous lecture. Bronsted Lowry theory helps to explain a variety of reactions that Arrhenius acid base theory does not cover. For example, it does explain how some weak bases produce hydroxide ion in solution, especially those weak bases that do not contain OH, minus, OH as part of its chemical formula. Perhaps the only weak base that we will encounter in general chemistry 1 is ammonia, or NH3. NH3 is water as a water soluble, and we encountered it in the first video lecture as a weak electrolyte. It is also considered to be a weak base. However, under the Arrhenius definition, which says that bases must produce hydroxide ion when dissolved in water, it is unclear based on ammonia's chemical structure how it produces OH minus in solution. However, if we use bronsted lowry acid base theory, it is, it is an easy explanation. Using bronsted lowry theory, we can describe water as an acid or a proton donor, while ammonia is the base, which means it accepts a proton from water. When water loses its pro a proton, it becomes OH minus, and this is where the hydroxide ion comes from when ammonia is dissolved in water through a proton transfer reaction. When ammonia accepts a proton from water, it becomes NH4 plus, or the ammonium ion. Therefore, ammonia increases the hydroxide ion by, from, by accepting a proton from some water molecules. However, it does so weakly, and this is why ammonia is a weak base. bronsted lowry theory also helps us to explain some reactions that involve weak acids and bases, such as neutralization reactions, which we will see in the next few slides. The first type of neutralization that bronsted lowry theory helps us to explain are those that involve weak acids. Perhaps the most common weak acid used in general chemistry is acetic acid, the major ingredient in most vinegars. When acetic acid reacts with NaOH, we can, it forms the, the salt sodium acetate and water, just like the neutralization reactions that we looked at in the previous lecture. However, things are different when we write complete ionic equations for neutralization reactions involving weak acids. So acetic acid is a weak acid, meaning when, it dissolve, when it's in solution, it does not completely form H plus and acetate ions. Therefore, we cannot dissociate acetic acid into ions when writing a net ionic or complete or net ionic equation. Therefore, in our complete ionic equation, acetic acid remains as is. Recall that you were given a short list of strong acids and strong bases 
that we know will completely dissociate into ions in solution. Any other acids that you encounter that are not on that list can be considered weak and should not be split into ions when writing complete or net ionic equations. Sodium hydroxide is a strong acid and a strong electrolyte and can be dissociated into sodium ion and hydroxide ion. Sodium acetate is also a strong electrolyte and may be dissociated into the sodium ion and the acetate ion. As always, since water is a liquid, it, sh it, it is not an electrolyte and should not be split into ions. In our reaction, our spectator ion is only the sodium ion. So our net reaction is that acetic acid reacts with hydroxide to form the acetate ion and water. If we look at this reaction closely, we see that acetic acid donates a proton to hydroxide to form the acetate ion and water. Therefore, the most specific classification for this reaction is Bronsted-Lowry, abbreviated as a BLAB reaction. Another type of neutralization reaction it are those that involve ammonia. If we react ammonia with hydrochloric acid, we can, we can use Bronsted-Lowry theory to predict what the product is. We know that ammonia is a weak base and should accept a proton from an acid, which in this case is hydrochloric acid. We also know that when ammonia accepts a proton, it becomes the ammonium ion, or NH4+. NH4+, combines with the chloride ion from hydrochloric acid to produce the salt, ammonium chloride, which is a strong electrolyte according to our solubility rules. This is the only product to this reaction. Water is not formed in a neutralization reaction that involves ammonia. We can also write complete and net ionic equations for this reaction. Ammonia is a molecular compound that is soluble in water. We should not dissociate such compounds into ions. You can simply remember that ammonia is a weak electrolyte and should never be dissociated into ions. Therefore, ammonia remains as is in our complete ionic equation. Hydrochloric acid is a strong acid and can be dissociated into H plus ion and chloride ion. On the product side, we also know that ammonium chloride is a, weak, is a strong electrolyte. We can dissociate this compound into ammonium ion and chloride ion. If we look at our complete ionic equation, we see that the spectator ion is the chloride ion. Therefore, our net ionic equation involves ammonia plus H plus yields the ammonium ion. Again, we can see that ammonia is our proton acceptor, and the H plus is being donated from chloride ion, or most specifically, the hydronium ion that's dissolved in solution. Therefore, this reaction is also a proton transfer or BLAB reaction. We have now seen three different types of acid-base neutralization reactions. These reactions are summarized in this slide. If we react a strong acid with a strong base, we end up with an ionic compound or salt in water. A strong acid reacted with a strong base can, can be classified specifically as an Arrhenius acid-base reaction. This is the most specific classification for acid-base reactions. It only involves a small subset of reactions. If a weak acid and a strong base are mixed together, you also form an ionic compound in water. However, 
at, when we look at the net ionic equation, we see that when a weak acid is mixed with a strong base, it can be spe its most specific classification is Bronsted-Lowry acid-base theory, or it's a proton transfer reaction. Finally, when any acid is added to ammonia, we form a salt that contains the ammonium ion. No water is formed when a strong any acid is added to ammonia. This reaction is also considered to be a proton transfer reaction. You can see that one of the key takeaways is that it's we, we can use net ionic equations to really look at what's going on in this in solution. This is not always apparent in molecular equations. To summarize this lecture, we use proton we use Bronsted-Lowry theory to describe acid-base reactions as proton transfer reactions. Also note that Bronsted-Lowry theory also includes Arrhenius acids and bases. Arrhenius acids are Bronsted-Lowry acids, and Bronsted-Lowry bases are also Arrhenius bases. However, the Bronsted-Lowry definition of acids and bases are that is that an ac acids are proton donors and bases are proton acceptors. We also saw that weak acids and ammonia are weak electrolytes, and when writing complete and net ionic equations, they should not be dissociated into ions. Therefore, it is very important to memorize that list of strong acids and strong bases so that you are able to easily identify strong and weak acids, especially when dealing with best base reactions.